All right, everybody. Welcome to Ology with Mark Arelli, the debut episode. This is hysterical. I have no idea what I'm doing, and I kind of love that. Um, for our first episode of, of Ology, uh, we are going to be taking a look at my backyard. And uh, so we are going to call this one Gardenology, which is, is that a word? I don't know. You tell me. If you, if you think that's a word, actually, you probably have a lot to learn here. Okay, I'm going to turn this around. Hey, everybody. It's me with my quarantine hair. Uh, I'm going to take you into my backyard here. I'll give you a little uh, view from the from the uh, the patio here. All right, so this is the backyard, and we have an interesting uh, property here in uh, suburban Boston. Our backyard is very long and deep, and it also, I don't know if you can see this, goes downhill a little bit. And uh, so there's a slope to it, and it turns out we are the lowest point in this entire block. So we get a lot of water back here, we also have a lot of trees, like this ginormous uh, Norway maple, and uh, these big willows and oaks and ash trees. This place was uh, was a bit of a mess when we moved in, and we've uh, we've done a lot of work on the backyard here. Um, and one of the things my wife and I like to do is to garden, and uh, not not so much on the food gardening, although we'll do the occasional tomato plants, uh, but I'm going to just wave at some people here. Thanks for joining. <laughs> Am I going to build an elevated stage back here? Well, if, it, if things get really bad, I just might have to do that. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're into gardening and uh, not so much the like food gardening. We'll do some tomato plants, but what I really love to do is garden with perennials. And uh, maybe I'll show you um, a little bit of the, the garden beds up here, kind of starting at the, the top of the yard before we get to the pièce de résistance, which is the, the challenging garden. This one here is, um, I guess you call this the lilac garden. That's a lilac uh, that I um, bought my wife for Mother's Day, God, probably 12, 13 years ago. And this one is filling in nicely. Um, We've got some sweet wood rough here. This is a native ground cover. I love this stuff. I wish it were a little bit better at actually covering the ground. I think we're gonna divide this and move it to this spot here because in about a month or so, all I'm gonna be doing is weeding this thing. Um, but you can see we got some St. Uh, John's wort. We got a butterfly bush back there. We got a ton of bleeding hearts. Um, love the bleeding hearts. These are the ones with the fringed leaves. And then uh, this little garden bed here, I think this was the first one we did. This is under this ginormous Norway maple. And the Norway maple's roots are prodigious and thirsty, and it's really hard to get anything to grow under them. So we have this stuff growing under here. It's kind of the only thing left. I actually don't remember what the hell this is. Um, so we'll have to see. Maybe some, Maybe one of you knows. Does anyone out there know what this is? Is it a kind of spurge, maybe? I don't know. Um, you can start to see a little bit of the native plants here. This is uh, a lily of the valley. It's still, still a little early for these guys. Um, but native plants are, are a passion. Um, we go to a place here called the Garden in the Woods, and um, and they have a lot of great, uh, a lot of great uh, native plants, and uh, so we've we've done a lot with the native plants over the years. The the garden that I'm about to show you now is challenging because it's shady and it's wet. You can see here. Um, well, first we just have a shitload of hostas. They'll they'll grow anywhere. I, I'm I think. I think that hostas are why we floss at night because otherwise you'd have hostas growing out from between your teeth. They're just, they'll, they'll do anything. But you can see this garden bed here. We've kind of made some terraces and it's right along this fence of our neighbors. And um, so it doesn't get a ton of sun uh, and it also gets a lot of water coming down 
down the slope. So we've had to deal with shade restrictions here, or shade constraints and um, moisture constraints. Um, and so we've tried to uh, we've tried to kind of get a little bit creative here. It's, it's a mix of native stuff and um, non-native stuff. So I don't know all my I don't know all my plants, but um, for example, I would call that a fern. I don't know what kind of fern. The only kinds of ferns that I really know are sensitive ferns, because I just like the name. Um, but we have some uh, coral bells or wachera and uh, some ferns and uh, more ferns. And this is a Jacob's Ladder. This is not, um, this is not a native plant here. Uh, this is, uh, but it's very happy back here, so we'll take it. Um, the first native plant that you see here are the bluebells, which are going crazy right now. Uh, and I love these things. They're the only things that are kind of, they're the first things that kind of grow. And, um, and they'll go away in a few weeks and other things will come up uh, in their place uh, underneath them, which is really cool. Uh, we got a sedum here, a C E D U M, one of the many varieties. Uh, this is a really cool native plant. This is trillium, and we have we have the trilliums kind of blocked off in this little this little semicircle of rocks because the soccer balls the soccer balls will come and uh, roll right into the uh, garden bed kicked by the boys and then they will wreck your $30 plants. So that's one kind of uh, trillium and then we have another one. Uh, I love that my wife is on here like totally giving me shit. I do. I like the bluebells. They're gorgeous. Um, so the trilliums are really cool. They're not really blooming yet. I wish they were blooming. Maybe we'll come back here in future weeks. Uh, we got some lungworts, um, which are not native, but they like the shade. So, uh, you know, you don't have to be a native plant to get into this garden. You, if you like the shade, uh, I feel like you're in. Um, we have some hellebores, or, or uh, um, they're also called Lenten roses, and uh, these are these have these beautiful kind of cranberry blossoms. I love those guys. They do well back here. And uh, let's see, I try to we try to. Uh, my wife and I did this garden while we were waiting for our, our youngest son uh, to come. She was very pregnant when we did this, and this used to just be a grassy slope, and we got all the rocks and we made these terraces and we try to put the most shade tolerant plants the furthest back so they're um, so that they're they're getting the most shade and that they're happiest um, this is not a native plant this is a shredded umbrella plant and uh, it's just really cool it looks like a Dr. Seuss kind of thing and you'll probably see here um, I don't know if you can make it out but you'll see like peanut shells or egg shells I put a bunch of like mostly composted compost on this. For me, let's see. For me, compost is like uh, horseshoes and hand grenades. Like, if it's almost compost, it's probably good enough, right? So um, up here we have some Solomon seals. They're very happy. They, um, there's some flowers. They make these little flowers under here. And um, these all turn into berries, of course, as flowers do. And, um, and I take those berries and then I throw them everywhere. And you can see uh, right here some berries that just dropped off the plant. They're starting to grow, which is cool. That's what plants do. Um, it's awesome when things spread around and fill in. Uh, we see we've got another Jacob's Ladder here and some more hellebores and um, some more lungworts. Uh, these are really cool. These are may apples. I love these things. We saw these at the Garden of the Woods. They're a native ground cover. They're about a foot tall. They have these little flowers underneath here. There's a whole world going on underneath there. I expect to see like fairies and stuff under here. I see you, Chris. Um, I'm almost ready for you. And when 
and when I am, I think you just uh, maybe touch the screen and it'll let you um, join or send me a request to join. But uh, I'm getting to the point where Chris Delmhorst joins, which is going to be awesome. Um, but these are our May apples, which is pretty cool. And uh, I saw those at the Garden of the Woods, and I was like, I have to have them. We've got to find May apples. And I came home, and I looked like further up in our yard, and I saw a couple of them that were just sitting here. I had no idea what they were. So, um, so I moved them down to the garden here, and they are very happy. Let's see. What else we got? We got some Uvularia. We got another kind of your more standard garden variety bleeding uh, heart. Um, we got some wild gingers here. These are my wife's favorites. These are the um, the European wild ginger. They've got a little bit shinier and uh, thicker leaves, round, more rounded leaves um, than the other kind of wild ginger we have, which is down here. This is just, as far as I, I understand it, this is just called wild ginger. And um, this is a really cool plant. It's not the culinary ginger that we eat. It's, um, it's different. But you can see, sort of see under here, the remnants of last year's flowers. There are these red flowers that kind of come out. They're almost triangular, and they are right along the ground, and they get these plants get pollinated by ants and other kind of crawling insects, which is super cool. And uh, let's see, we got some purple cone flower, some uh, echinacea here, which is also cool. And then here's another native guy. This is the um, this is the bellwort, uh, which you'll see these in northeastern forests. And then we're kind of now we're sort of repeating ourselves uh, back to Solomon seals and more ginger and Lenten rose and stuff. Um, I do, the European ginger does seem fancier. I, I would agree with my wife. So this is where I wanted to bring in Chris Delmhorst uh, because uh, I sent her a text of this plant last week and, uh, and I was like, tell me what this is. And Chris and I have a little mutual ID uh, relationship. So let's see, Chris, can you figure out a way to get that like request where it says request to join video I wonder got it alright just request it and I'll let you join because I would love to see you wonder if I can no oh if I go I can go live with you let's see I can't uh, this will be amazing if it works am I here <laughs> You're Holy there. crap, it worked. I'm going to, hey, how you doing? Hi, buddy. Uh, thanks for doing this. Sure. It's Chris Elmers, everybody. Are I'm doing great. Plant ladies? Yeah, you know, this This is perfect because Chris is one of the first people, is not one of, she is the first person to ever hire me as a sideman, uh, guitar slinger person. That's and right. now, yeah, and now you're the first to, to be on my whatever this is. It's and so simple, man. It feels right. It just feels right. <laughs> so um, for those of you, there's probably most of you who know who Chris Delmhorst is, but if you don't, she's an amazing singer songwriter. She's got a brand new record coming out later this year, which you should definitely watch for. Um, but she's also an incredibly uh, knowledgeable plant person. And I am a somewhat knowledgeable insect person. So we have a, like a special relationship, right? Like we you, do. Text, you text me bugs. And I text you pictures of, of plants, and we both ask each other, like, what is this? <laughs> I text Mark all the bugs, and I live out in the boonies, and I have a lot of special bugs. You do. you got some cool ones. And I think the general, I mean, if you were, like, a less hardy person, I think the general tenor <laughs> of our relationship would be, like, should I kill this or should I no, pull no, this no. out of the ground? But you don't, you don't actually like to kill stuff. You, you, I you only like ask that about those weird termite things that weren't termites. Yeah. That's right? the only thing I was tempted to kill. Right. Thin waist is, is the ant. Thick waist, termite. That's, that's, that's what we want. And right. We so this is a thing that I do, and this is a thing. I go on an Instagram thing. I know. It's amazing. So this, this is the thing that I, that I texted you about last week, and yeah. I was like, what are these? And you spring were beauties. like, spring beauties. You're like, there's probably another name, and I'm sure there is, but I don't need another name for them. That's, they're fine. Who needs a better name? That's a great name. I know. 
I, I'm actually thinking of changing my name to that. Um, and it's funny to see those here because they're in this part of the garden. I, I won't, actually, I want to turn back around. So where the spring beauties are, you kind of look beyond there and it gets very sparse after there. And that is because of this guy. Black the walnut. black walnut, right? And you know about these things, right? They produce... I think of you flower what? cam. Yeah. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> we don't like have to I talk a... about it. I just didn't want to look at my face anymore. I love it. Well, but I, when you show your garden, I feel like I brought a knife to a gunfight. I mean, that's <laughs> just amazing. It's just a bush, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the, uh, the thing about black walnuts, is probably a lot of you know, is, uh, yes, they produce beautiful tone wood, and there's a part of me that would like to cut this thing down and make a guitar out of it. But what they also do is create allelopathic chemicals from their roots. And uh, in this case, they create a chemical called juglone. And uh, allelopathy is, uh, are chemicals that inhibit the growth of other plants uh, around it. So under our black walnut, there's, there's just a bunch. It's hard to get stuff to grow. Uh, and spring beauties, as uh, Chris told me what those were, they grow on, they specialize in like degraded or disturbed landscapes. So it makes total sense. Um, so we have like a, a totally, a, a total dilemma here. We've tried to to plant stuff around here, under here that works. And some stuff was just here, um, like these Jack in the Pulpits, which are really cool. You guys have Jack in the Pulpits uh, at your yard, Chris? I don't have them in my yard, but they're out in the woods all the time. Yeah, they're like a wetland thing. Yeah, right? I don't have trilliums either. You have cool um, wildflower type of things. Well, I didn't have trilliums either until I bought them and put them there. So oh, there you go. <laughs> you could do the same thing. I only do that with things I can eat. <laughs> yeah, see, I'm more like perennial guy, and you're like the you're like the vegetable person. You, I am you like the vegetable person. Um, <laughs> it takes all kinds. That's right. So I was asking Chris, like, what the hell I should do under here? I mean, certain things are doing well. Like, you can see this European ginger has just kind of like nestled right into the the roots of the black walnut there, and they're very oh. happy. And then um, these little uh, these Tall stocks here, you probably um, recognize those uh, fine viewers as uh, irises. And I have all different kinds of irises. Chris, you know Maria Sangiolo, right? Uh, yeah, I do. Vanilla bean. Yep. Um, Maria is a wonderful singer, songwriter, kids artist. She had me um, plan her record once and, and um, she paid me in irises from her garden. So that's where, <laughs> that's where all the irises came from. Sure. Um, what you were saying to me, I was asking you, like, what I should have under the the, um, the walnut. And you were, what, what were you telling me about? What oh, are yeah. they called? And that's actually exactly what I'm aiming at right now, just by chance. It's these guys, wood poppies. Let's You're not aiming them, at them because we? the producer told you to aim at them? <laughs> Hi, wood poppies. This is them. They're really pretty. That. I bought, um, my mom got me two of these, and you cannot eat them. Although, supposedly, maybe they might cure warts. Which okay. is almost as good, um, but my mom got me a couple when I first got this house, and then they're like little bunny rabbits. She got me two little plants, and look, I'm going to show you now the carpet of wood poppies under this maple tree. Oh, man. Is off the hook. See, that's what I want. They just keep going, and then I just, you know, I pull them out because there's a lot of them, but they're so pretty. So and now they make that... these really cool, oh, they haven't really done it yet, but they make these amazing fuzzy seed pods. Oh, cool. If we tune back in in about a month, Marky, I'll be able to show you. Let's just stay season. live for a month. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have anything to do anymore, apparently. <laughs> um, that's really cool. You made, you made an interesting point there. You're like, you, you kind of pull them out from time to time when they get too, too crazy. Uh, as far as I, I know, I remember learning in school that there's no biological definition of a weed it's just like something growing where you don't want it to grow that's a weed it's totally subjective right and so as luck would have it chris was telling me about these these wood poppies and you know i should get a few of them and she said look it up and you'll see if it works for you and i looked it up and i was like those look like these plants that i have been pulling up 
for 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> like this guy here. There you go. Right? That's it. So Just I got, think what you could have had, Mark. I know. And there's another little one here that I transplanted. And then I found another one. Yeah, right in here. They, they, they love to grow in here in between the irises and the sweet wood rough and the jack in the pulpits. Yeah, totally. I got so some I've irises been, over here, too. They like irises. Yeah. So I I've think been somewhere here there's some ginger. Oh, you know what else I have in here that you would like is ramps. Ramps. You know what they are? I know. They're, yeah. They're all under here. They're wild leeks. They're so delicious. Yes. I thought they were food. And wait, am I still here or did I go away? <laughs> You're still there, but something's covered up the camera and it's just it's, all red. I got it. Oh, there you go. These guys, they don't look like much, but they're what? so tasty. You pull them up and they have a little onion on the bottom and you pickle them or you just eat them. Amazing. Or you can saute the greens up too. That's really tasty. You know, definitely if this thing goes on too much longer or even when it's over, I'm just going to come out there at come a socially on. responsible distance <laughs> and you can tell me if there's any plants that you don't want and I will take them off your hands and I will come. I always have extra plants. There's right? Ah! Ah, I think she's dead. Oh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, you could do this for a year. I mean, you could do a hell of a gardening episode on your yard. It's just amazing. <laughs> I love it. I love I'm seeing it. There's not, you know, it's still pretty, it's, that's just boring. It's cold here. It's cold here today too. It's a little, garlic. it's a little, it's a little crazy. What else? Do, I'm going to finish the rest of the garden here. So now we're on the other side of the, the walnut and we got this um, Rose of Sharon. And I don't know if those are native or not but this one came from my father-in-law's yard down the cape and i think they like are it. yeah they're beautiful um and we got some pachysandra there just for the hell of it just to try and cover up whatever was there before and then this is my what one of my wife's favorite plants here this is a um, marsh marigold nope that's the jack in the pulpit this is the marsh marigold too. and so and supposedly these things grow in big clumps. Do you have you seen these things before, Chris? I've seen them wild um, by the river and stuff, but I haven't seen them in a garden before. No, do they grow in like big clumps or just individually? Um, yes, I have seen them in big clumps before. Yeah, I think this guy is the reason why we don't see it in big clumps here. But they're supposed to be able to handle the juglone. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. He comes up every year. And seems pretty happy in its little circle of rocks there. That's so we can remember where the marsh marigold is planted. <laughs> Here's one for you. Do you know? Do you know what this is? Can you see what that is? It looks like nettles. Is it like? A, is that what they call a false nettle? Maybe. Is it? Does it not have stingers? It's a little hard to tell. Let's but... see. Oh God. <laughs> no, I, I mean I have pulled up these many times, and yeah. Huh. So that's well... what makes me think it's a false nettle. Get closer to that flower there, Marky. All right, let's see. Can I, uh... Huh. And it, this is a single one, but it'll grow... Uh, grows in stands here. It seems... I think, you know, all these little things down on the ground, I think that's, yeah. what, that's what these are. And I think if I let this thing go, it just would be all this. And it looks I don't know. so nettly. It does look nettly. I'm going to look up false nettles when I get off of here, and uh, which I'm going to do very shortly. <laughs> I didn't even know that there was a false nettles, so there, I've already you, learned something. Well, you know, we're all, we're all here to learn. That's what ology <laughs> is all about. And, you know, I'm just making this up as I go, but uh, I figured I got all sorts of talented smart friends and I should call people up and uh, see if they will join me and give us some of their expertise. So thank you so much for joining me chris i appreciate you taking the taking the dive of course are you gonna do a bug show as soon as there's bugs it's just so oh, goddamn good cold <laughs> solid, solid point yeah no definitely <laughs> we'll do a bug show and some other creepy crawlies and uh yeah i don't awesome. know i haven't really planned it out we'll see perfect well thanks for thanks for stopping by appreciate it you kinda you too <laughs> bye everybody all right bye bye all right, so I'm seeing some some uh, votes for a bug show. Definitely, we will do a bug show. That's a that's a definite. Um, and uh, we'll also do some music things too. It's not going to be just 
uh, nature stuff. But um, this has been fun. I'm I'm just figuring this out. Most of what I do is very uh, rehearsed and prepared for. I'm I'm known for doing my homework. Uh, and for this, uh, the idea for this show came up in a conversation with some folks and was kind of like, well, yeah, that sounds fun, but I don't know what the hell it is or how I'm going to do it. And I kind of purposely didn't prepare and uh, I'm kind of glad I didn't. But um, this is the first one. We did it. We got through it together. And uh, I appreciate you stopping by here. And um, we'll see you next Tuesday on uh, Ology with Mark Arelli. And I actually don't know how to get out. Oh, there it is. It says N right there. Okay. Love you guys. Miss you. Stay safe. And uh, we'll see you soon.